Hey, what's up? Trailcross LT, no bullshit. Let's get right into it. I'll explain the pros and cons and why you should or shouldn't buy these after a full year of use. Before we begin, like this video, subscribe it, share it around, watch it, helps me out a ton, keeps me psyched on making some videos, so do what you can. I've always been a clipless guy myself since the racing days, and uh, the only reason I had the shoe was because I needed flat pedals again to ride with my broken ankle while I was recovering. I'm like super picky about them, they have to be perfect, they, I, like, I can't really stand riding flat pedals, and even these took a while to get used to, but uh, I was pleasantly surprised. Here we have the Trailcross LT. It is a mixture of a trail running shoe and a cycling shoe. That's why you get the, this design, which I think is sick. Looks a lot more standard like a tennis shoe, but it has the durability and use for trail riding. First pro I wanna get into is just the venting. I think that is like hands down one of the best features on this shoe. You've got vents literally the entire way around the top of your foot. Even the tongue itself is super thin and it's got like a ton of air holes. But as you can see, like all of this, toe box, side of the foot, everything has got vents. So you're gonna be getting really good airflow on the top of your foot. And then it's also got vents on the heel back here. And then lastly, even the bracing around your ankles has some vent holes so that it's not super duper hot. Next pro I would definitely say has been the support of this shoe. You'd think that like a, a super lightweight shoe like this is gonna lose a lot of that stability when riding. Like, 510 is known for their stiff shoes, like really good build quality and longevity because they need to be tough for downhill riding, for flat pedals, all that stuff. Quick note about the fit of the shoe actually. It's pretty sweet how flexible they are on the top because I did rock an ankle brace, like a pretty thick ankle brace under this. It's like a brace back here for your ankle. I mean, I can't even really push in or pull out back here. It feels like this base down here almost feels like metallic. I know it's a super rigid plastic, but it's really tough. Uh, there's a bunch of padding on the inside of the shoe that's kind of like ridges. And then this like tough leather outside um, is super good for if you hit pedals or rocks or whatever, it's gonna keep your foot in a lot better shape. And then with that, you know, it's just that build quality of like, I can bend the toe, which is great because then you can actually kind of like walk around in these, they're much more of a normal shoe, but you can't flex the bottom of this thing at all, which is insane to really try to like get it to bend um, because it's just so stiff. And that's like great because this base is where you're gonna be having your foot on the pedal, right? So it's awesome to have that be like insanely stiff um, because you know that you're gonna get a lot of absorption there. You've got this raised support here that kind of comes from the trail running inspired shoes um, that really cusps around the arch of your foot for really good support and then you can see these indents here so that it does have the ability to be flexible here and here without losing that extra stability and padding on the bottom of the shoe. The overall fit and support, again, is really good. Um, I feel like they can really hug your foot and you know they can get super tight all the way over the top of your foot if you've got skinnier feet, um, but they can also expand really far too. I think the design there was really good and that's definitely trail running inspired. They feel good on your foot for long periods of time. And that's something that's really tough to find in a shoe, especially cycling shoes. Like there's always some pressure point and I'll get a little bit more into a con of that later, but overall fit, I'd give it like nine out of 10. The rubber, obviously stealth rubber is super good. If you've had any 510s, you know anything about 510, you know that stealth rubber is insane. So this has stealth rubber, really good stuff. As you can see, after about a year of use, there's only like, one knob that's coming off like one and that's like right at the major impact zone next is just like i think the design of these shoes is phenomenal mainly the looks i think most flat cycling shoes look like shit um but these are kind of an exception and i say that because they definitely look more like a tennis shoe um i've used these for like everything i've used them for riding like long rides 25 plus miles uh, I did like Mag 5 in these shoes in the winter. We'll get more into that later of winter riding, but but the look is just really good, right? It's just, it feels like a shoe you could rock every day. Like you don't have to just wear these on the bike. A lot of shoes you see look like fucking astronaut shoes and you can't wear them on <laughs> like anything but the bike because people are like, they just don't fit in any outfit. But these are just much more casual. Like I've worn these all over the place. Um, I've worn them just as like day-to-day -day shoes. I've worn them for filming like in the desert um, down in Virgin. 
Um, I've worn them on hikes, I've worn them on scrambles, like approach shoes for climbing, all that stuff, and they've been super good for that. I mean, yeah, they just don't look stupid. Like, I feel like you can hop off the bike after a long ride, maybe go get some Alfredo with the boys at a subpar Italian restaurant, and nobody's gonna bat an eye at these things because they just look like a dirty tennis shoe. So it's just, you know, they're casual. If it's a little bit small, um, I normally wear a 10 and a half, this is an 11. I don't get any forward to back motion, but I did notice as I went up a size that the side to side is a little bit bigger than I'd like, but overall pretty good. Yeah, another durability thing. The only thing I've noticed is that like maybe this rubber is peeling a tiny bit. And I did get some comments on my previous video about people saying that some of the threads were coming out, um, patches were coming off the sides and like, I haven't seen a single thread look like it's coming out. So I think that there may or may not just be bad batches of shoes, like any product. Um, but for me, I've had no issues with that. Um, even this shoe too, same deal. And you could tell, I literally have fucking gum on the bottom of this shoe, so they've been around. Yeah, again with the durability, this toe box has like a pretty sweet thick cover on it, um, as well as this super big actual toe here. So, I mean, I've kicked so many rocks. You can see all the scratch marks and like I've hit tons of stuff with this, but it's super stiff. So you're not gonna fuck up your toes wearing these shoes. I know that's definitely an issue with lighter shoes is that you feel like impacts are a little bit worse. Obviously you will notice that if you hit up here, which is pretty unlikely, but the heel and toe are really reinforced and solid. Um, they do flex a little bit so you can still move around, but like you could kick, you could kick fucking Chuck Norris in the balls here and you would not feel a thing. With the, uh, the walking, I mean, they are about as good as you can expect a cycling shoe to be for walking around on the ground. If you've ever worn just clipless shoes, you know that they only go like this. There's no flexibility. They might have a little bit of a roll. So it's like smack. I wouldn't recommend like walking around town in these per se. If you're like on a family trip, we're like, we're gonna do about five miles of walking around New York City. Just wear fucking tennis shoes. I mean, these are way overkill for that anyways, and I bet you know that, but um, if you're just like packing your bag, you're like, oh, I got those trail crosses, probably not dialed for that. So really just good as like a, a really good hybrid shoe, obviously. It's like if you're going on a bike trip and you're like, oh, we're just walking like around town to grab food every once in a while, I just need one pair of shoes. You can totally get away with these and that can be it. You don't really need much else. The craziest thing is that these aren't even smelly and my feet sweat a ton, but obviously the ventilation of these is so good that it, you know, there's constant air going through here and um, they'll dry out super fast. They won't get super stinky. They won't sit and sweat. Like the airflow is incredible. So you won't have fucking nasty ass feet all the time. I mean, yeah, I think, I think the color is super sick too. I mean, I, I'm wearing all black, but like just the design itself is super, super minimal. Little orange pops are pretty sweet. Um, it's just enough to make it feel like it's more than just a black shoe. I think like all the little details that they have, all these stripes, logo placement, the colors, the actual design itself are really good and leave you with a pretty stylish shoe. So let's get into some of the cons here. Um, there are definitely some things that are a little bit more on the nitpicky side and also just me being stupid. So take these with a grain of salt. They might not fully apply to you. So I'd say the first one is kind of going back to the fit thing where I'm at like a nine out of 10. The reason for that is, like I said, I kind of sized up a little bit, um, but I tend to have narrower feet. So my issue is that the toe box seems to be pretty wide. I feel like the, the form of the shoe fits really good around the sides here, but as soon as you get into the toes, I've definitely noticed some sliding back and forth. It's a little bit of an issue when you're on long rides and you're getting a lot of movement in there, lots of rubbing, banging around. I did notice my, sore, my feet were a little bit sore after like Mag 5. Not bad enough to where I wouldn't buy these shoes again though. So if you have regular size feet, probably not an issue. If your feet are narrower, keep that in mind, but don't let it deter you from buying the shoe because I personally wouldn't. Another stupid nitpicky thing is I like to just single knot my shoes and these laces fucking suck. They're really thin, obviously it's a lightweight shoe, but if you're like switching out of them, just hopped out of the river, running back to the truck, single knot it, it'll probably fucking come undone within like one minute. So I just double knot it now, not a very big deal, but it is just like an annoying little thing where it's like you kind of want to just like do that all the time but I'm much more of just a single knot, quick, ready to go kind of guy, so. Another small thing about these shoes is you can't really rock them in any sort of cold or wet weather, obviously because there's so much ventilation. Like you think like, oh, you just wear thicker socks or whatever. 
If it's wet, it is going to soak your foot. If these get even the slightest bit of water on them, they cannot repel it. It is literally just a big hole here, like this entire thing. So if you step in a puddle, like your foot's gonna be soaked. So I mean, if it just rained the night before and you have another pair of shoes, maybe keep it in mind because it's not great having wet socks swishing and swashing around inside your shoe when you're trying to ride. And then along with that cold weather, like I did pretty much my first experiments in the shoe during the winter because I had just come off a broken ankle needed to start riding again but it was winter time colorado and it's like if you know anything about colorado it's usually like two foot under the snow or super muddy so um i did a lot of stuff in the snow and it was just kind of brutal because my feet would get numb they'd get wet all that stuff again not an issue with the shoe itself just know that like can't really rock these in the winter or the cold and then along with that is just like another just stupid little thing that's just more annoying than really a flaw with the shoe itself. If you're riding in dusty conditions, dry, lots of dirt flying around, your feet are going to get fucking filthy. So just keep that in mind. Like, again, dirt goes right through these holes. You can see they're super dirty and it's sticking to all these holes, especially like it doesn't just flow by. It picks up on every single crack. So, I mean, if you... It is a really good all-around shoe, but it does have some annoying things where it's like you can't really rock it in every single condition and have it be flawless. So that's kind of it, guys. I mean, I wanted to be quick, quick and dirty on this edit. Um, just give you, you know, no bullshit, just my personal opinion on everything. Hopefully get you to buy the shoe because I really like it. I would definitely give it like a nine out of 10 probably. I think if they fixed maybe the toe box um, and maybe somehow made it so that these vents aren't as likely to get water in them. Like it doesn't quite need this much ventilation. Um, I would give it a full 10 out of 10. But beyond that, like I've been super impressed with these shoes, the durability, the style, the functionality, um, the all around level of what they're capable of is kind of next to none. The high tops in these are pretty sweet too. I think if you're doing like hot free ridey stuff or dirt jumping, you could totally rock those and have a good time. Um, but these, for your all around trail riding shoe, if you're pedaling, you know, just going for a cruise or if you're doing big long days, definitely would recommend. Like this video, subscribe to me, share it around, watch it like eight times, comment if you have questions or if I fucked something up and I'll answer it. I try to reply to everybody. Thanks so much and uh, catch you next time.